of screencasts on setting up a development environment on a Bonton virtual box. In the time passed since the last recording, Sun was actually acquired by Oracle, including all its products, so now it's Oracle virtual box. Um, my name is Natalie and uh, today's episode is an overview of NetBeans. So whether you want to develop for Drupal or just tinkering with Drupal themes, you're going to need an editor to write your code. Or you could go even further and get yourself an integrated development environment that's going to have code checking and completion as well as versioning, debugging and many other useful options. There are several um, IDEs available, both free and commercial. Um, Eclipse is one of them. My instrument of choice on Ubuntu is NetBeans as it's free and uh, very powerful. NetBeans runs on Java, so we're going to install it first. Let's open the terminal and run this command. and then proceed with the installation. Just going to need your confirmation. So once Java is installed, uh, we can go ahead and download NetBeans from the official website. And in case you are wondering, there is actually a version of NetBeans included in uh, Ubuntu repository, but it's usually lagging behind the official release. So let me show you. So if I search for NetBeans, the version is actually 6.8 and it's already 6.9 on the official website. So let's close it and go back to the download page. And NetBeans was originally developed as a Java editor, but we're interested in the PHP version. So we're going to download it. Save the file. After it's been downloaded, uh, make sure you know the directory where uh, the file has been downloaded. Then you can open it through the command line. Remember, Linux directories are case sensitive. And now uh, we can simply follow the installer, accept the terms. NetBeans should be able to find Java by itself. I'm going to uncheck these suggestions from the developers for now. You can leave them checked if you want to. Now, if everything is OK, NetBeans can be opened through the Applications menu. By default, NetBeans greets you with this kind of uh, start page with various aggregated content. If you don't want to see it, you can simply uncheck this option. Before you start working on any actual Drupal projects, it's really important to set up NetBeans to recognize the Drupal coding standards. So let's go to Tools Options, then Editor, Formatting, and make number of spaces per indent equal to 2 and tab size equal to 2 as well. And then in Miscellaneous you will need to add um, Drupal file extensions so that NetBeans is going to recognize them as PHP files. 
So I'm going to click on New and then add its extensions one by one. Let's start with Profile, then choose associated file type as text PHP 5. Then do the same for module. Theme. Engine. Install and test. Now I'm going to click OK to close options. In the previous episodes we have installed a new Drupal website. So now I'm going to edit, use it to um, create a new NetBeans project. Go to File new project or you can type Control shift n then choose PHP application with existing sources because we already have the code base. Hit next. Now I need to find root directory on my Drupal site and it's here, Drupal sites 16. Okay. Correct the URL of the project if you need to. So I know that my site is at Drupal 16 and then we are done. So a default NetBeans setup uh, is going to have several windows and tabs. The projects um, is going to show all your projects. So if you're going to create a new one, it's going to show up here as well. The files tab uh, is going to show files for your currently active project. The services shows your databases and other services. Uh, actually, let's make the windows a bit bigger. And I'm going to make sure the connection to our database service is open. So it tells it's disconnected right now. So let's try connecting it. Okay, we need to set up it first. So you can log in as Wood and you need to add the password that you used to set up your um, MySQL database server. Okay, now it should be connected and it shows you the databases. So you can connect to the database for your Drupal website. So your connection is going to show right here and you can choose your database and see the tables. Or if you right click on the tables, you can um, do various commands, but we're not going to go into it right now. The navigator, if you click somewhere in a file, the navigator windows can show you the list of functions in the current file, but the index.php doesn't have any declared. So let's open some other file. Actually, we can simply right-click on this function and then go to Navigate and go to Declaration. We can go to Menu Inc. And then the Navigator window is populated, as you can see here. And if you click on any function, you can go directly to it. So, you, as you can see, it's very convenient. Another nifty option is when you click on any of the variables and it's going to highlight all of these variables in the whole file. Another very useful feature is code completion. For example, if you click control spacebar, you can see all variables here as well as functions. So you can start typing to narrow it down. 
So that's pretty cool. Let's hit escape. Let's delete this. And it also works for the Drupal function. Some if I start typing see all these Drupal constants and functions right here. It's pretty cool, I think. Uh, there is more, of course, such as debugging and team services and various ways you can make your coding easier. But this was just an introductory lesson, so hopefully I will make more in-depth tutorials later on. So I hope I have convinced you that using an idea like NetBeans despite some learning curve has a lot of advantages and then you can continue exploring it on your own. So if you have any questions or suggestions for the future screencasts, you can go to um, friendlydrupal.com. Bye for now.